Greetings and salutations, folks. Look at this. This is in the loft here at my mum's were loads of my old games. Oh, God! I don't think I played this one very much. Uh, oh, hit and run. Oh, my goodness. Monkey, I've got Monkey Island on pretty much every computer I've ever owned. I've got it, um, I think I've got a couple of copies of the PS2, it's the best game in the world. This is the fourth one in the series. Um, mixed opinions usually on that one, but I love it. It's in Boston. So that's some of my PS2 stuff. How many copies of San Andreas did I go through? Gosh, I've played it to death. Super Buster Move. The Suffering. Is that the first one or the second one? Oh, the Slayers were so scary. Sing Star with microphone. The original Sims. I actually tried this one and it doesn't work, so I'll either get a new one or just play the other one. Um, then I've got some PS1. I don't remember Die Hard being very good. <laughs> Ridge Racer, this is probably the only, aside from like Mario Kart, the only racing game I really, really like. I remember being pretty good at it. Bomberman, I think there's a few games in here. Oh yeah, oh god. I, this Bomberman game I played so much, I'm surprised it still sort of exists. Sorry, I know these are all sort of stacked. I don't know why, why I don't have the cases. Bubble Bobble, that has Rainbow Islands on it as well. Who wants to be a millionaire? Buster Move, the original one. Well, it's not original, original, obviously. It was originally on the arcade, I think. Me or something. Buster Move 3. Buster Move 4. Sorry, I don't think I'm pointing this properly. I've got two copies of the original Harry Potter. Uh, one of them doesn't work at all, and one of them... I don't remember... I was playing it a few... like, a week ago. Don't know what was wrong with it. Maybe it just didn't work or something. There's another Croc. Croc was one of my favourite PS1 games. I love it. I've still got some of the soundtracks on my iPod. This is... I think there's two or three copies of this. This is one of my favourite games of all time and I lost my mind when I saw Jack Jacksepticeye was doing it. Um, this is the third Spyro game and I've played it to death. I know all of the tunes, I know all of the characters, I know every single egg, everything. And I would like to say I've completed it, but once you complete it and get everything, you go on to the super bonus world and then you do a couple of missions there. And there is a skateboarding mission there that I cannot do, even as a grown-up now. A grown-up that is like a self-confessed decent gamer cannot do it still. Is he racing the Yetis or something? I don't know. I don't have this or I can't find it. Guardian Crusade, totally, totally underrated game. Made me cry so much. It's adorable. If you can get your hands on it, play it. Space Invaders. This is the best Space Invaders I've ever, ever played. It's really, really cool. Um, pretty easy now by today's standards. I don't remember that one. And that's some of the PS... I mean, obviously this isn't all the games I've owned as a child or what. This isn't my childhood home and I haven't been to my childhood home since I left it at like 19. So Christ knows what's there if it hasn't been sold. What's that? That's a dance stage! Oh, I don't think I have my dance mat here, but I, I, I used it so much. There's another one there, a dancing stage one. And in here, we have some, I don't know if it's some or all, of my Mega Drive games. The Mega Drive is my favourite console of all time, specifically the Mega Drive 2. I think it's beautiful. Um, right, look, Little Mermaid. Haven't uh, completed this one. I found it really boring, sorry. Haven't played it in a very long time though, so. Uh, Monster Lair Wonder Boy 3. This is very catchy. Sort of a uh, platformer with the bonus stages. Uh, Talmud's Adventure. Oh, I've got the tune in my head right now. This is the one I've been sort of hanging in my head. I don't know if any of you guys have played this. I don't know how popular it was. I don't remember. don't remember having any friends that knew of it. Lemmings. Oh, Lemmings. Look at the price back in the day. <sighs> Sonic 2. The best of all the Sonic games. I think Sonic was born the same year as me. Yeah, this one was 92. But yeah, Sonic 2 is my personal favourite and I love Tails as well. Alright, Castle of Illusion and World of Illusion. Castle of Illusion has the, uh, aside from Monkey Island, has got the best soundtrack of any game ever. It is the cutest thing. YouTube, um, I think it's the Enchanted Forest and that's like level one. And the music is just so cute and you can't be sad when you're hearing it. Quackshot is another Disney game that is so cool. This is the first one I put in there and it's in there at the moment. And it's still really difficult. I'm struggling a little bit. Pinocchio, um, don't know if you guys know, Pinocchio 
is my favourite thing in the world. Pinocchio is number one, with number two being the Sunflower character. That is how much I love Pinocchio. So, of course I have to own the game. But yeah, Pinocchio is... It's, it, I, I'm going to die, but yeah, okay. Megalomania, this is a game my dad used to play a lot. Um, I don't remember playing it much myself, but I do remember watching him play it. Zombies! This game, I think in America, was called Zombies Ate My Neighbours, or Zombies Ate Your Neighbours, something like that. Um, and it was on the Nintendo as well, so I'm not sure which... Um, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Whatever. I've got it on Mega Drive, and I love it. And you start out with a water pistol, and then the levels get harder. Never, ever, ever completed it right to the end. It's one of those games. Um, it's got loads of levels. I think it must be at least 50. Um, what does it say? No, it doesn't. It's one of those games that you can... Um, once you've completed past a certain point, it gives you a password, and then you can turn the game off and go and live your life for a little while. But if you enter the password, you're left with the basic weapons, so you haven't got all the weapons you've collected. So you either need to sit down for a couple of days and play it straight, with the machine still on, to complete it. Or you you can't, really. So not it's not flawed as such, it's just a bit too difficult. Goosebumps! They're not the original ones that had... The original ones had a different cover, like the textured sort of... I remember Say Cheese and Die specifically. Oh look, yeah, that's the newer version, it must be. Sorry, you're not in shot there. And I've brought a couple in here. I've got... This is the beauty. That is the Mega Drive 2. Sega Genesis in America. Absolutely beautiful console, beautiful shape, and it still works. After how many decades? It still works perfectly. Um, there are th I remember having three of these. I mean, obviously three. It's number three there. But the first one, I can't remember. I know it had columns on it. can't remember what the other two were. Alien Storm is so good. It's another one with good music as well. Um, hang on. Oh, yeah, it's on the other one. don't remember the helicopter one, and I don't like racing, really. So that one's pretty much Alien Storm for me. Revenge of Shinobi, I think, is the third Shinobi game, and it's quite difficult. I haven't completed it. All these games I have not completed. The Mega Drive is so difficult. I don't know if it's because I'm used to sort of modern games where you can save your game and come back to it later or what. Gold, this is just so good, this one. Streets of Road. I think it came out the year I was, I was born as well, and love it. I think most people like the second one best, but the original is just so classic. It's the second level of this that's got one of the best soundtracks as well. Golden Axe. I don't, eat, I, I don't even need to say anything about Golden Axe, everybody loves it, everybody knows it, it's, it's, yes. Sims 2 Castaway, I played this a lot at the beginning of the week, and then I was playing Theme Park Worlds, both addictive games. And now I'm playing Champions Return to Arms, this is the second Champions of Earth game, or like the sequel to Champions of Earth. I love it so much, honestly the cover looks sort of alright, but the game itself is so good, it's sort of, it's very similar to sort of, um, Elder Scrolls, Oblivion, all of those sort of games, that's the feel that I get. But they're so classic to me that this is like, I spent so much of my teenage life playing these games. This, uh, Champions of Earth, and um, the Dark Alliance games that I showed you earlier, especially Dark Alliance 2, they are so good, can't even. You may notice I'm in a different setting. Um, I know there's a handful of you that know something's up. Um, certain things have been happening that I haven't been able to deal with, and I didn't want to just make videos with how things were, because things weren't good, and still aren't good. Um, oh, it's so difficult to sort of explain. So, I moved and started living on my own, I think, I don't know, three months ago or something. Um, it was it was a rubbish flat. Um, it's so difficult to explain, really, because it's opinion, isn't it? When I moved in, it needed a lot of things doing to it, and it was a council place, it wasn't even owned, I didn't own it, so... The thing is, I don't want to tell you what the problem is that I've got. There isn't... Some, some nobody's died, I haven't been through a breakup or anything like that, it's just certain things are happening that I can't deal with, especially where I'm living, and that's why I'm at my mum's at the moment. I'm staying with my mum, probably going home in a week, um, but I'm not going to be recording videos while I'm there because I don't feel comfortable to at the moment. So, uh, what I might do is, when I'm next here, bringing all my recording stuff here and just uh, recording some videos here because it's fine here, I feel comfortable speaking here. Um, there's not going to be certain noises that are going to interfere with the mic. So yeah, I moved and lived on my own in a place that we completely done up. We spent a lot of money on I bought new carpets and everything because it was just disgusting there. Um, it's quite a nice, quiet area um, and now the flat is really pretty, it's really lovely. 
you would not think it's a council place, but there are certain things in the environment that I can't deal with. <sighs> I'm getting really hot just standing here. It's stress, I suppose. I'm stressed at the moment knowing that I have to go back there with the problems that I have. Um, and it's sort of... I'll tell you the basic problems. The basic problems are just to do with the flat. So the housing association that owns the place aren't doing certain things they are supposed to be doing that are causing little bits of stress that are just sort of eating away at me. For example, my letterbox is broken downstairs in the communal part. They told me before I moved in it was going to be fixed and it still isn't fixed now. And somebody did open my post. Somebody saw personal stuff, they see my date of birth. So I freaked out, obviously. I mean, these the people that opened it aren't horrible people. They're just sort of, I don't know them, so I'm not really comfortable with them knowing that much about me. And there's lots of little stresses like that that have been getting to me, but then there are bigger ones that I can't deal with, yet there isn't a solution. So at the moment, it's like, what, what am I supposed to do? And at the moment, I'm just trying to cope with the stress of it all, because I can't fix the problem, and that's something that I need to do. I need to. It's okay to have a problem, but if I can fix it, I need to fix it now, so that I stop thinking about it constantly. But when you can't fix it, what are you supposed to do? All you can do is distract yourself. So I got straight in the car. The last time it was bad, I just got in the car and I drove across the country and I'm here with my mum at the moment. I literally just dropped everything. Um, I didn't have a plan to go back, like as in a date. I was going to go back, obviously. But it's stressful to know, not that I have to go back, because that's my home. It's a beautiful flat. It's lovely now. Um, I've always wanted to be on my own because I like my person. I need my personal space. I'm really fussy about the amount of personal space I need. Really fussy about noise and things like that and people around me. That's why I was prioritised to be put where I am. But it turned out that the place I am has sort of been missold to me, if that makes sense. And it takes a really long time to be able to get someone to live at all. It's difficult to sort of explain what I'm thinking without sounding like a total asshole. Like, I live in a council place, it was, certain things were told to me that were going to happen, like I've just explained, but also about the area and about the people and things like that, there were lies told about things like that and the neighbourhood. And when I presented these problems to the housing association, they sort of just told me to go away. Like, I presented them with my tenancy agreement showed them the things that were not, like, that were not being met by other people. And they just shrugged it off. I don't want to tell you what's wrong because, one, I don't want you to feel sorry for me, two, a lot of places in the world these behaviours are considered fine, they're, they're alright. <sighs> I'm going to stop talking now because I'm getting too hot. Hang on, let's go somewhere else. My mum knows a lot more about me now, so she sort of understands a bit better what's going on in my mind and what my problems are and that I sort of need my personal space, but I'm not rude. <laughs> oh, it's noisy out here. That's oh, a nice breeze though. It's a really nice house she's got. What do you guys think of American Horror Story season six? What do you think of it? I, I didn't have high hopes, but I am really enjoying it so far. So basically what I've been trying to say is that I haven't quit, I haven't died, nobody's died. And things are just difficult and I don't want to just make videos sort of for the sake of it and put out rubbish content because I'll be pretending to be happy in a sense. But I don't need to at the same time worry and think, oh, she's not happy, I wish there was something I could do. Because there's nothing anyone can really do at the moment, it's more waiting for certain things. Uh, okay, let's stop talking about it now. I'm going to play some more Champions Return to Arms. I think I'm on... I have no idea what I'm on, actually. But it's a really annoying part and they're all shooting fire at me and I'm a mage. And a mage is tricky with this, you really need a lot of melee. I know, said it before, I call it mealy. I know don't, some people don't. Shut up. Okay, bye. I just watched that footage back and realised how uncomfortable I look and sound. 
Vlogging is still really unnatural to me. I have to get used to it eventually, don't I? I was about to say something, I can't remember what. Oh, that was it, look. Look at where I'm looking right now. And then look here. That really annoys me. When I'm watching a vlogger and they're like, oh, this is what I got up to today. Look at your audience, man. Actually look at them and interact with them and picture their wonderful faces. Because then they're talking like that. It's all, you're looking at yourself. Look at the dark circles. You can tell I don't sleep. People complain about dark circles. Look. I know it's partly the lighting in here, but it doesn't matter, does it? Thank you for watching, guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video or whatever. I don't know. If you want me to play a specific game that I showed you, leave a like. That's a, that's a better idea, isn't it? I keep looking over here because I'm fixated on those dark circles. They are something else. What animal is it that looks like that? Panda? No. Pandas are far too cute. <coughs> See you later. Bye. <laughs>